Hey everybody, I am meteorologist Brandon Spinner alongside Raven Richard. It snowed a lot, a lot in many parts of the tri-state. You've been here all morning. Yeah. Uh, give us the timing. What happened? When did it start? What are we seeing? What did we see? What did you see throughout yeah. the morning? So this morning, uh, just normal morning coming in. Uh, we had yeah. live drive out. And we started at, at 5. I was mm -hmm. like, you probably won't see very much in the first hour or so. And that's exactly what happened. Right. So 5 to 6, not a whole lot. And then once we hit about 6, we saw the outer edges of Indiana finally start to see some snow moving in. And then once we got to about 7, that's when a lot of it started to move into about half the tri-state. So that's exactly what it looked like. And then from that point on, I mean, it just got very heavy in parts. So, um, yeah, some of us were expecting to see a little more of a mix, but that mix basically just turned over into straight snow. Mm -hmm. A lot of those darker areas really just ramped up. I mean, visibility was gone instantly. Uh, some of the snow rates I had up to about three inches an hour in parts, so mm -hmm. it was really coming down. We had accidents this morning, so it was a busy morning, and really things didn't start calming down until, I guess, about maybe 30 minutes ago. Would you yeah, say? and there still are some pretty decent snow bands yeah. out there, but not nearly as strong. Um, so the big question I know a lot of people are asking is, so what happened? Uh, when we were forecasting the last couple of days, you yesterday, we look at computer models. Yeah. That's how we forecast. We look at different models. Each model maybe has a better uh, grip on things here or there. They were all over the place. Yeah. You were telling me one model yesterday was showing all rain. I came in and it was showing all snow yeah. and vice versa when you came in again this morning. So that's what makes an, uh, a system like this so much more interesting and so much more difficult because I want to show you guys the temperatures as I pop that up with the current radar. Yeah, I will say our temperatures this morning stuck at 30. 30, 32. 32. Yeah. yeah, just stuck there. So we're sitting at 33 in Cincy. That's probably the report from the airport. Uh, 32 in Florence, same with Lawrenceburg. 32, of course, is freezing. Uh, and it doesn't have to be freezing for there to be snow because we can start to pull down the colder air to the surface uh, from the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere because the higher you get up in the atmosphere, the colder the air is. We can pull down some colder air, but when we're seeing temperatures right at 32 for a significant portion of the surface and you've got snowfall rates of one to two inches an hour, even three, as you mentioned, yeah. and our overnight temperatures fell a lot colder than where they were supposed to be as well. All model projections were showing 31 to 30 for most areas. We were at 28 as of 11, 11 o'clock last night. So the ground was colder yeah. um, than originally anticipated and we didn't have that changeover. I wanna show the snowfall rates, uh, as you were mentioning Raven, two to three inches per hour as I throw that up for you guys on the screen. This is seven o'clock as the snow really ramped up. Wasn't terrible yet. We had right. a little bit of a wintry mix and you can even see right there off to the east of Cincy, it says less than 50 inches per 12 hours. <laughs> Don't do the math on that one, but everything else you see here, there's two inch per hour. So we get that for an hour or two, which was predicted. I was talking about it yesterday and we talked about it on Friday as well. An inch to an inch and a half near two inches per hour. That's fine for one hour. This lasted for two or three hours in yeah. some spots. And this changeover was supposed to be over to from snow to a wintry mix and then rain as the temperatures bumped up, but the temperature bump just never happened. Right. So that's where the biggest concern came from. And that's why roads really started to deteriorate because there's a lot more snowpack on it. And if you've been outside, this is a heavy snow, right? It's, this isn't that dusty snow you put on your Christmas decorations, right? This that is road. that snow that you make a snowman with. Uh, it's that dense packing snow. You get hit by a snowball with this snowball, it's like, it really hurts. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that takes down power lines, huh. takes on trees. Um, we did have some power outages yeah. as well. It wasn't a whole well, lot. Snowflakes were yeah. about, <laughs> Steve made a joke. He said they're the size of a Buick, but they had to be about three I inches in diameter uh, in my neighborhood in Northern Kentucky. And when you're getting that wow. consistently, that's when things start to deteriorate. And it's a fine line. There's what we call the, um, uh, the dendrite, dendritic growth zone right. and we f perfectly aligned in that this morning which wasn't supposed to be the case the entire time right. and that's how tricky winter forecasting can be because if we were one degree warmer in many spots i bet you the six inches of snow that we've seen reported in some spots is more like two inches just because of that one degree temperature change but we're seeing results of five you said six inches in yeah. parts of the southeast yeah. indiana uh, and that three inch snowfall rate came from the Mason area. So that lines up with the 5.8.
But that three inch snowfall rate was just for what? A half an hour or yeah, so? It so even that long. Right, and it, it doesn't take that long to pile up, even if we're looking at an inch and a half of snow in an hour or even a half an hour where it was expected to be just maybe even a little bit of rain that changes the ball game so much quicker. Now we did have a couple cars, a couple folks mm -hmm. out driving today. Not a whole lot, but we did have a lot of crashes. Now, what are you expecting for tomorrow? I think tomorrow will be fine. Here's a live look uh, from our tower cam here in Eastern Cincinnati. You can see there's not much coming down still uh, with that. There are some areas of some slush, but the interstates look pretty good. Yeah. How was your drive? By My the drive, the uh, I drove in. It took about 15 minutes longer than normal. Okay. Um, Cutting the hill was fine, but that's where cars were backing up. Uh, also, coming into Cincinnati is probably the worst streets okay. that I was running into. That Eden Park Hill here on the east side of town, uh, as we bounce around with some cameras here. There's a look at Gilbert right outside the station. Oh. So there's still some snowpack on the roads. The good news is we don't have wind with this, so it's not really pushing that on the roads. And there's a look down Fort Washington Way. I'm just bouncing across a couple of our camera networks. Cars look like they're moving okay. Mm -hmm. And Highway 42 through the Florence area was okay as well. Here's a look uh, from Crew Tower. That's not coming through, but uh, here's some ODOT cameras. Are we pulling those in? Yeah. Uh, I'm not too great with the ODOT cameras. Do you know what that one? That's I-71 at Red Bank Road. Yes, so there was a crash over in that area. There's been a couple crashes for today. We've seen traffic back up mm -hmm. really bad. Um, but yeah, luckily it's Sunday because, you know, if it yeah. was Monday, things would be a lot different. Right, and there were some church issues that I was scared about, and yes. we've got a lot of people probably getting ready to go to Bengals pregame parties, exactly. right? It's 1.30, the game kicks off in about an hour and a half. So that was the biggest concern. That's why today was a 9 first warning weather alert day. We declared that on Friday, yeah. so we were well ahead of that. Um, now a lot of people asking, why do we get so much more snow? It just didn't change over to rain like every single model predicted. When we're looking at models on Friday, yeah. We weren't even looking at more than an inch of snow. Now, so does the position of the low have anything to do with it? Yes, and I think what also changes it is I want to pull up uh, the national map for everybody here, the national radar and zoom out. So look down to the south and east. I'm going to clear this and I'm going to put this on a loop. So all of this rain on the southeastern portions of the United States. I'm going to draw this. This stuff out here, look at how much that kind of evaporated as we pulled in more moisture here into the tri-state. Hmm. Now, if this stuff was a little further south, we wouldn't see as much snow because we wouldn't be pulling as much of that uh, moisture in. That moisture coming in out of the south uh, would be inhibited. And I've noticed this when it comes to severe weather. If you have any um, activity down to your south, it's usually going to hog up that energy we didn't have that. This was all on the East Coast right here. So that moisture flow was able to just rise straight up here into the tri-state. And as it came together, uh, we saw more enhancement within the snowfall rates. Again, two to three inches of snow per hour, yeah. even if it's for an hour or an hour and a half, that's two to three inches, if not four inches of snow in some spots. I measured back in Union in my backyard, uh, at 945 and we had two and a half inches. I measured at 1030 and it was at three and a half inches. Wow. So it's a matter of that. And if we had that change over to a wintry mix or even rain for a 10 minute period, that would have tamped those totals down, which was what we were expecting. Yeah. So any comments coming in here? Just a rain mix in Brooksville right now, almost seven inches in Harrison from Doreen. Um, schools tomorrow. I think we're going to be okay school-wise just because of the fact, almost eight in Hamilton, according to Catherine. Uh, the issue here is the roads are warm, and I think we can pop up road temperatures. Yeah, so my road temperatures this morning, so I was watching them. They were right around 30, 31 degrees at the start, and likely probably warmer than that now. Yeah. Uh, we can get a total look at that right here. Road temperatures. Uh, here we go. This is what our actual road temperatures right now are going to be. So we're above freezing in most areas. So that should help melt away the snow. The plows are doing a very good job, especially on the interstates. I think the schools are going to be OK, except the side streets. Um, but we were so warm here for the last several days and last several weeks that the ground temperatures aren't nearly as frosty or as deep with the freeze 
as we would normally have here in the mid to late January. So I think school systems should be okay tomorrow. Um, I My don't husband asked about that. I was like, oh, yeah, you probably got school. <laughs> I think you're going to have school. Uh, we do have to keep an eye on Wednesday because Wednesday we've yes. got another chance. Uh, I think that's more of a rain event, but we're still three days away at this point in time. We would have been looking at the Sunday storm system on Thursday, and we saw how that developed over the three day period. So there's still lots to determine for Wednesday. So keep checking back. Raven's been in. She's a trooper. She's been in for almost 12 hours today. So I'm going to let you go wrap this up. Thank you for your hard work. You're awesome. Good teamwork. And let's just break down what's going on one last time before we wrap this up. So here's a live, a live look at our road temperatures uh, across the tri state. Low 30s out east of town. That's where we're still probably going to have some issues. Lebanon uh, towards Wilmington, Hillsborough, Batavia. But even these are starting to warm up and that should continue to happen. Let's take a look at our advisories and our warnings out there here across the tri state. Winter storm warning is in effect for a majority of the tri-state and that is through seven o'clock this evening. Carroll, Gallatin, Boone, Kenton, Campbell counties through northern Kentucky, Switzerland, Ohio, Dearborn, Ripley and Franklin in southeast Indiana, southwest Ohio. If you're in Clinton, Warren, Butler, Hamilton and Claremont County, that is through seven o'clock this evening. Everybody else is within that winter weather advisory in the purple. So that's Owen, Grant, Pendleton, Bracken, Robinson, Mason, Adams, Brown, Highland counties, Fayetteville and Union in the southeast Indiana. Again, that is through seven o'clock this evening uh, for much of the tri-state. So keep an eye on the roadways, uh, especially east of town, because that is where we're still seeing some of the snow. Here's that six hour loop of when the snow came through. So the heaviest coming in just after six o'clock, but where you notice the darker blues, this is where did you see that changeover? It was pink for much of Kentucky and then it snapped right to a dark, heavy blue. So that's cooling down the atmosphere. Hard to forecast for that just because you don't know how much of that cold air is going to get pulled to the surface and you can have a one degree temperature change and that could change anything from two inches of snow to just a quarter inch of rain in some spots. So that's why today ended up being a lot on the snowier side of things than uh, what we were anticipating because Look at that rain line down towards our south. That was projected by most computer models to be a little further towards the north. And it's really hard to determine, especially when one computer model had the rain line up towards Connersville yesterday evening. So that's why over the last couple of hours, we did bump up our snow forecast, especially yesterday. We were talking more of a two to three range. Um, we just didn't expect the two to three inch snowfall rates to last for two to three hours in many communities. Here's that 1030 radar as we moved through the afternoon. We got another influx of moisture, which was anticipated, but this was all supposed to be rain by about 11, 1130 by Raven to be safe getting home. And there's a now another live look at where we're at radar wise. So snowfall totals that we've had reported from the National Weather Service, the highest out of Dillsboro, Indiana, just about six and a half inches. Mason 5.8 Union, Kentucky 5.6 Cheviot at five and a half and at CVG five. I bet you that number is slightly higher. And again, those roads are becoming better because the impact of that snow has really decreased. The heavier parts of those snow showers have decreased, but also we're getting to a warmer part of the day, more traffic on the roads, and we're starting to get treatment as well. So road temperatures, the biggest issue out towards the Clinton and Highland County areas, everybody else, we're starting to see that decrease uh, in um, road coverage regarding snowfall uh, and snow cover. So continue to keep an eye on this. We've got more updates online throughout the day. Um, it's going to be much quieter here as we go throughout the rest of your day. Here is one more look at your snow rates throughout the day, and this is why it was such a, a big impact from eight to about 11 o'clock. Look at these numbers, two inches per hour out towards Westchester, half an inch per hour out towards Oxford. But I want you to look at that number just off towards the Mason area west of Wilmington. This is where we started to see three inches of snow per hour. Those rates coming in, that's why it piled up so quickly and uh, this was majority supposed to be turning over to rain at this point in the day. And that is why our totals are slightly higher than where we were anticipating uh, last night when I was given the forecast of two to three inches for that area of the tri-state. This just cold air just continued to pile on and really not change comparative to where those computer models were looking and what the general trend had looked like. 
So as we recap this again, winter storm warning out for those in the pink winter weather advisories out for those in the purple. I am meteorologist Brandon Spinner. You can ask me questions here. Uh, five inches in Boone County. We want a snow day, says Constance. Snow tonight in the forecast. No, we're done. Um, and let's just take a look at that next six hours and uh, give you what we can expect. So here's the next six hours. Look at the snow. Uh, I got to show it, Brandon. There we go. Uh, so there's three o'clock. There's four o'clock and then by five o'clock all of this is gone and really from now on I don't anticipate too much more accumulation. There's a live look town town through Fort Washington way. You notice most of those interstate streets look OK. Um, the on ramps, the off ramps, probably the biggest concern here in bridges still because they're a little harder to clear. Um, but for the most part, what we are seeing is the heaviness of that snow starting to lighten up. Uh, we're not seeing as much accumulation except out towards Brown County and into southeastern Claremont County. We've got some lighter snow showers moving into Hamilton as well as into Butler County right now, but those are light. They're not really going to accumulate much longer. So again, I'm meteorologist Brandon Spinner. If you want to look me up on Facebook, Brandon Spinner WCPO Meteorologist, you can find more information there. Ask me some questions as well. Um, hope you have a great and safe rest of your day. Uh, go Bengals.